Hey, hey, welcome, folks, to another Chalk Talk at the desk of Coach Hess. Um, lots of years ago, back in 1991, I was published, believe it or not, in a magazine called Coach, Scholastic Coach. And in there, I wrote an article that uh, got me quite a bit of recognition called the Flex Break. I'd worked with a guy named Pat Riley uh, at a uh, at a clinic and uh, talked with him a bit about some of the ideas. And sure enough, here's an article written by Coach S. So what that was about, in many ways, is a lot about business and how we function, you know, and, and, and built through our mentors and relationships. Um, I had the opportunity of sitting in a gym with maybe 50 other coaches and Pat Riley was giving a discussion, you know, we're talking, this is when the, the, the Lakers were showtime. And of course, magic was kind of new on the scene, but uh, they were starting to push the ball pretty, pretty quickly up and down the floor. He talked about a lot of the techniques he used. And of course I'd been running a, an offense called flex that came from a guy named Carol Williams um, at Santa Clara. And uh, hey, you know, Everybody had their own versions, lots of different things. But it was also the same time when Loyola Marymount was going on its big run, um, meaning that they were scoring like 160-point games and stuff because they would just push the ball and put kind of what we call inside-out pressure on the front end of the uh, press. And uh, all of that was just a wild era for basketball. But I came up with a flex break. And, you know, what I'm mentioning here is some of the mentors and teachers that we all have to have in our businesses or whatever we become successful in is that uh, coaching was pretty darn important to the game of basketball and to any sports. Um, is it as important for businesses? Um, there's a big break there, I think, in people recognizing that they should have not only an accountant and a lawyer um, on their team, but they should have a business coach as well because you can't see uh, can't see inside the frame when you're in the frame of the picture. And having that third party outside time sometimes makes a big difference. So let's talk specifically about the fact of the flex break and, and how it uh, came about and what it looks like. For those of you that are a bit of a basketball fan, you might appreciate some of this. The concept of the full court rather than a half court offense became the reality very quickly when I recognized uh, the way the game was being adjusted and played. And gaining a, a little bit of an advantage on your defensive end could create a much bigger advantage on your offensive end. So you need to think about that right now. We're going through the virus change and so on. You're kind of playing some defense, holding your cash and so on, but how are you going to turn that into the offense and become a sprint to the other end? So think of yourself playing a little defense right now. The concept that I worked on in flex break was all based upon the midpoint from basket to basket, right? One side, the other side. One would become the strong side, the other one would be the weak side. Whatever side the ball was on was established as a strong side. So let's make an assumption that down here we're playing defense and our five man, our big guy, gets the rebound, okay? We've got four maybe over here blocking his man out. Three might be out here blocking a man out. And then two might be here guarding his guard and one here. Numbering each of the players as their positions, right? Point guard being one, two, shooting guard, so on. Three, your swing guy. Four, your uh, secondary post. Typically ran two posts. But let's assume we're in a defensive position at this point. We just got a rebound on this side of the floor. What that means is we're establishing this side of the floor on our offensive end as our strong side right now. We know that everybody knows their first step. They know how to move their arms. They know how to swing. They know how to pivot properly and they know which direction they're heading. Um, just like in a business, you need to know where you're going from A to B. Why we have mastery of destination, same concept. Only this is taking it down to just a pretty minute level, but it's still, we all know where we're going right now. If that's the case in your tasks and your daily work, think how much efficient, more efficient and optimized your business would be. So what we would train people is once they got the rebound, they recognize which side of the floor, if they're going to go to this direction, take their inside elbow, drive it as hard as they can along with all the power they can put into their leg 
to get that initial first step advantage right here at the baseline where we just gained possession of the ball. We want to beat the other team to the other end, but we want to do it in an organized fashion. So when the balls rebound on this side, we expect our one and two guards to take outlet positions on the strong side. We want the ball to be outletted there. Of course, three immediately sees that the ball's position there, and his first step from even this far away is to take off down the floor at a rapid pace, and maybe the ball might be outlet and hit to him on a break, on a fast break, just an easy one, but probably not. Anyway, he sprints down the floor, looking for the ball, cuts on the 45 line, and establishes this position. Strong side post, okay? We're on the strong side position. One and two, let's say the outlet gives, goes to one, two gets a pass from him, and one's now bringing the ball down the floor. He realizes as one's coming down that he can take the ball straight to our number one position, our strong point there, right? That We call it the elbow, strong side elbow. The two man who's thrown the ball to him recognizes the situation, and he takes off down the sideline and may – because he's got another person, will keep spacing. The four, he takes off fast, looks for the break as well, as fast as he can get to own this position. And of course, the five, who through the outlet, he's going to come down the floor last and be in this position. So let's redraw our board. You see what's happened on this end, is everybody knew as soon as we got the rebound, we could draw it to anybody. The idea of taking up these, these specific spots on the floor with this being the strong side and this being the weak side. That kind of relationship sets us up for our flex offense. So let's drill in on that for a second. Everybody remember those spots. We've got the ball down on the floor at this point in the most efficient and fastest manner from point A to point B. That's pretty straightforward. Everybody's got that, I hope. And that's talking about getting from point A to B in an efficient manner in your work environment every day. How do you do that? You build task lists. You have weekly plans. You have meetings with your staff on a regular basis. Your, your staff is very much involved in, uh, in inclusion and they're part of, uh, part of every meeting and they feel like they're part of the goals and the goals of the company are theirs as well. And they know that uh, they, they are a major cog in that wheel. And that'll motivate people. Um, if they get very good at their task, such as in a basketball situation where you can train people in very specific areas to get a little bit of an edge well that's the same way you got to treat your business folks find the little bit of an edge you can get because a hundred of those little bit of edges make a big difference and you keep adding on to them and looking for continuous improvement so let's get it back to the flex break we've got a ball down the floor we ended up in this position our one guy has dribbled the ball to that spot our two guys over here on the wing uh, we had our three man down here in the low post on the strong side. We had our four man in the weak side post, and our five is our trailer on the weak side elbow. All right, once this position's here, we want to get some kind of motion going. Now, this could be happening, you know, as we got very good at it, in flow almost, right? Where you're coming down the floor and these things start to happen. But the strength of this offense is based on screen the screener. Watch what I mean. We make a pass to the five, all right? Pretty easy when he's coming down late to get him open to make that guard-to-guard -guard pass. When that pass happens, we immediately want four to cut out to the wing, pull people away from the post. Now, you'd think that three would just jump in front of there and try to post, but what we wanted to do is set it up so that three screens for two, and two comes into the middle of the key, taking that spot. Now, oftentimes that pass is open and it's a layup. Three, who looks for the ball on the roll, is now being screened by one. And three will come up here. Screen the screener is the name of the game right there. That guy that's getting screened, right? Number three, 
or the defensive player on three has to somehow or another help two to get to his man or maybe switch, which could happen. When he switches, now all of a sudden he's getting screened again immediately by somebody else, and it makes three a very wide open jump shot at the elbow time after time. That's the fundamentals of flex. If you're quick and you're keeping up with everything here, you'll notice if I draw some red circles that we now own, right? We now own the same spots that we had on the other side of the floor. Now we can do the same thing coming back the other way or other variations of what we had in the offense. And basically the screen, the screen or the flex, you can keep that going. Very confusing for defenses and uh, created many open shots. So how does that win? How does that win in business? Let me tell you, if you get these things right, you get everybody following a system, they're all working together, they're bringing their own interest and creativity to that system and systemizing as a whole is what makes a value, uh, a company valuable. Um, once it's running by itself, the overall increased value of a uh, business is much different than if it's running with the whole bunch of cogs that have to be pushed and pulled every day. Getting it systemized, making sure that uh, you as an owner, if you are the business owner, is getting in a position where it can run by itself, where you as the owner um, can actually take a few weeks vacation and the company will run fine. What that shows you then is that the value becomes a multiple of growth when you're at that point because anybody can come in and run the system and it's valuable to the market. Um, typically two and three X can become the reality of your revenue versus if you don't have those things in place, uh, the possibility of even getting a sale and, and having a wealth event at the end of your uh, getting from point A to B uh, may not be very good. So you've got to pay attention to what you're building and how you're growing it and uh, get down to the fundamentals and the details folks. I hope you enjoyed our talk today about flex break and making some analogies to the, uh, to the world of business. And uh, if you want to go back and look up Scholastic Coach from 1991, you can find a great article in there about a lot of what I talked about. And I'll tell you what, I haven't talked about it for a long time, and that's it's 30 years ago plus that uh, I wrote this. But uh, it's amazing when you write something, you remember it well. And you always remember it. And I think that uh, when you're going to publish, for something to be said about that. All the best to you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. That's over and out today from the desk of Coach S and uh, Flex Break to Biz.